Welcome to another video. We're going to discuss Revolve in Imagine Shape. So I'm going to get started with the workbench, Imagine Shape, create a new part. Now the Revolve feature is available on the creation panel over here. If for some reason you don't find it, you can right click on the ribbon and you're going to search for the creation section, which is this one. You can re-enable that. So I will also re-enable that and we're going to see that it will be located over here. Afterwards, you can drag and drop it on the ribbon. You can also find it at the top. If you're going to go for insert, we're going to see that underneath sweep primitives, we're going to have the imagine and shape revolve over here. If you also want to reset the user interface, I highly recommend that you go to check um, this video. So as we can see over here, reset feature position in Katia V5. This will be the video. I will position a link in the video description as well. So let's get started with Revolve. Now, by default, if I will not select any of the default view, uh, views, for example, over here on the isometric view, I can go to the front view and that will relocate the camera orientation regarding the, the design part. But if for some reason I will remain like this within the perspective and I will click on the revolve, I'm going to see that the axis will appear on the middle of the screen. If I will move my mouse up and down, I can increase this, um, let's say, drawing view. The same will be to the left and right. So this is the equivalent of the drawing view. Also, this is the tool palette associated with Revolve. You can also access all these elements by right clicking within the viewport. We're going to have drawing view, plane selection. So the same options over here. Now, it is important to position the parts that we are creating in Katia. So as you can see, if I will just click on the, um, let's say, various points, I will have this element defined. Afterwards, I can finish that. Now, if I will rotate, I also press escape to cancel that uh, ribbon. We're going to have the part, but we see that the origin of the part is located over here, while our subdivision will be positioned like this. So I will just delete that. And I will go, for example, within um, Y and Z plane. Now I will center the view over here by going to the front view. And I will start a revolve. And as we can see, since I had that selection of the plane in orange over here, now I will have the middle axis directly aligned to the origin. So. Let's see, the first one is a drawing view, so we can have that increased. We already talked about that. The following button will be the plane selection. Now, since we already select the plane, this is not required, but you can swap the plane like this. If I will click on plane selection, for example, I will go on the X and Y plane. And as soon as I will click this, I'm going to see that the camera didn't rotate, but now if I will go to the front view, I will see that the camera will rotate. So this is that uh, original or orientation. So you can also use any other different planes. So you can define um, various planes and use those. I will go back to the Y and Z for this case study. Now, within the following button, we have the primitive profile. I'm going to activate this and we're going to see that within the drawing view, we're going to have an erase at the top to the left. We're going to have various profiles over here on the top. I will slightly reposition those elements. So let's see, for example, if I will select the first one, we're going to see that we're going to have the profile position to the right of the origin. And this will be the profile and we can do various changes to that. For example, 
only a section, half of that, three thirds, or like this, with a line at the top. So these are all the predefined profiles available within Imagine Shape. Keep in mind that you can also add points or move points over here. For example, I can select that point. I can go to move point. And as you can see, we're going to have a real time preview of that profile being revolved around the middle axis. If you want to, you can right click, you can add additional points. And afterwards, we can have those aligned. We can have those aligned like this, as we can see. There will appear various uh, axes that will align those. So, like this, we can have those horizontally aligned. But as soon as I will click the OK button, so over here we have the apply, which is also enter. We no longer gonna have that possibility to change those elements. So this is currently a subdivision surface, just like any normal imaginary shape subdivision surface. So I can select everything. I can have everything scaled on one axis, on all axis and so on. I can have those translated or rotated. But keep in mind that we can no longer access that part where we can define that profile. So this already process, we're going to have this as a subdivision surface. So I'm going to hide this for now and I'm going to go back within the revolve. And let's check some other profiles. We see at the top various profiles. For example, this will be a triangle shape. Over here, we have the possibility to swap between various triangles. We're going to have a rectangle. As we can see, some variation of that rectangle. We're going to also have a cross, a star, and other profiles like this. This is the same with more details. We're going to have an arrow to the top. But we also have the possibility to add letters. So at the bottom, we're going to have from A to Z. We can select a profile and we're going to have that added as a sketch. And if you want to add numbers, you're going to find the numbers to the right. But as we can see, let's say the font for this is not uh, the best. As we can see over here for the number three, we're going to have that section in the middle. So if you want to, you can add additional points and have this stretch a little bit uh, better. So this is a section regarding primitive profile. And the next one will be to add points. But now since we have that already selected, since we already chosen, uh, chosen a primitive profile, if you're going to go forward with add point, move point, align point, we are actually going to add those points just like we did uh, by pressing the right button and adding those over here. So we can also erase a button if you don't want to. So keep this in mind. And at the end, if I will click apply, we're going to have that profile revolve 360 around that axis. Now I will also hide this and we're going to go again within the revolve. And if I don't choose any profile by default, I have the possibility to add those points. So for example, I will select a point over here. We can see that we have some information over here, so we can add vertices. These are the points. You can select to add a vertex, or we can also keep the left button press in order to move it. For example, I will press the left mouse button, as we can see, we can move it in real time. We're going to see a preview of that shape. Again, position another point, have that previewed. We also have the possibility to close those shapes. We see that at the top. So I will just position some more points. So we're going to define something like a base. And as you can see, if I will rotate, the top and the bottom will not be filled. So we can go over here on fill sides. So if I'm going to click on these ones, the top side will be filled. As we can see, we will have a, a red 
icon over there. The bottom one has a red, red as well, but I need to click that once again. And now you're going to see that the top and the bottom will be filled. If I'm going to click on that again, we no longer going to have the top and one more click, we remove the bottom. We can also click on that. So as we can see, we can do either that or we can click it over here. And uh, we also have the erase. So this will erase a point, as you can see. For example, maybe I don't want that point anymore. You can either erase at the ends or you can erase within the middle and the profile will be automatically redrawn. And we can add additional points afterwards. So we can have all those erased and we can have new points added. And uh, over here we have the possibility also to use the attraction. So this will be quite similar to other elements within Imagine and Shape. We're going to have the possibility to go either smooth to sharp. And we're going to see the, the, that weight over here. But we also need to select the point. For example, this is a selected point now. This will be a weight of 0 and this will be 100. And as you can see, we're going to have a hard edge formed over there. If you don't want that, you can click on Smooth to Sharp. So this will actually create a hard um, section between those. With this, we're going to have a little bit of area between those. So by clicking on this, this will actually create that sharp section. And now we also have the possibility to close the curve over here. But by default, if you're just going to click on Close Curve, the software will automatically link the end point to the start. So for example, this will be that. So it's not exactly what we intend. Therefore, I will have this erase. So I will go on edge, delete that edge. As you can see, that didn't really delete it as intended. So I'm just going to Let's see. I'm going to press undo. So keep in mind that within Imagine and Shape, you can do Ctrl Z, but only within this, let's say, predefined area. Afterwards, you will not have a history regarding this. So I just undo that until I use the close curve. And I'm going to add some additional points. So let's see. With add points, I'm going to go over here to the middle. And somewhere over here, if I will click on again on close curve, we're going to have that link to the, to the first point. And at the end, if I will press apply or enter, we're going to have that profile defined. So as we can see, this is the profile. What is important is that within Imagine and Shape, everything is in surface. So we don't have an actual wall thickness over here. As we can see, we don't have a section view directly over here. But keep in mind that you can also swap back to part design. And within part design, we have the possibility to apply a dynamic sectioning. We can choose that plane, which is this one. And we're going to see that surface within uh, the section view. So if you want to add thickness, you can always apply thick surface either over here within part design or you can do that in generative shape design. For example, I will want to add three millimeters on the outside over here, which will be on the inside on the mid on the middle area. So outside on the outer section, inside three millimeters on the middle. As we can see three millimeters for this part is quite a lot since um, it's quite small. But with two millimeters, we're going to have this object defined. And again, if I will jump within the section view, we're going to see how our, uh, let's say, revolve profile will look within the section. And we can also drag that section along to, to better analyze the shape. OK, so this was mainly the section regarding the, um, the revolve from Imagine and Shape. I'm going to make additional video for um, Extrude, which is also quite interesting and a powerful tool. 
So I hope that you like this content, I will position a similar video over here to the left and a subscribe button to the right. So thanks for watching.